and good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Welcome to your Talk to Inspire session. Today, we have an inspirational leader with us from our first, for our first Talk to Inspire session. He does not require any in- interruption, but a standing ovation. Please join me in welcoming Agam Apade, SVP and CTO of GlaxoSmithKline. He is responsible for driving large-scale digital technology transformation for GSK and implementing enterprise data and analytics platforms. Before GSK, Agam has held a strategic roles in notable companies, including Eli Lilly and Company, Johnson & Johnson, New York Mellon, as well as Ernst & Young. Thank you, Janine, and really appreciate the introduction. And a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. And a very warm welcome to the inaugural session uh, of Talk to Inspire. Uh, as Janine mentioned, I'm your host, Srikant Shetty, and today I'd uh, like to welcome my inaugural guest, Agam, who's a dear friend as well. Today we'll be talking about a lot of things. Uh, we'll talk technology, we'll talk business, and hopefully along the way, we'll try and discover the human behind this great leader here. So my first question to you, Agam, and without further ado, I know, I mean, I saw your LinkedIn post uh, just recently. This was around the new GSK. And I know it's really exciting. I know you would look really cool on those orange glasses and whatnot. Uh, just share something more about it and the exciting developments that are happening within GSK. Thank you, Shetty, and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, for this inaugural session. And thank you for all the kind words uh, for my introduction. <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, it is a fantastic time uh, for all of us technologists. So last three years or so or more, uh, we've been working, um, you know, in in kind of creating a two great companies, and and our, as you know, the current GSK we had, um, um, you know, pharmaceutical vaccine and consumer healthcare business, and then we had a joint venture with Pfizer where we took all their um, uh, consumer healthcare business, and then had uh, that you know vision that in 2022 we'll split into two organizations, we're gonna demerge and create a consumer healthcare as a standalone company, which is now named Helion, uh, which is already announced. Um, and then bringing the RS and VX business together to create one unified uh, organization. So last week, June 8th, is when Emma Wonsley actually announced it. And it's fantastic and it's this awesome um, and highly energized and exciting opportunity for all of us. So let me spend some time, just you know, a few minutes to tell you exactly what it is, right? So like most organizations, the new, I mean, obviously we announced our new brand and new cool, you know, GSK logo. And we no longer call ourselves Lesser Smith Klein, but we call ourselves as GSK. And, and, you know, the important part of any new organization is what's the purpose? Like, why do we exist? So it is very important for, for me to share with you that we basically call ourselves that we unite science, talent, technology to get ahead of disease together. So first of all, we are no longer just science organization that generally most pharmaceutical companies used to be. Like we are science and technology. And then talent is key part of it because without talent, none, none can be done uh, in any business, especially in our business, right? And, and then getting ahead of disease together is a key mantra for all of us to make sure that we bring the power of togetherness to actually, you know, drive, um, uh, you know, diseases out. There is to create this positive impact on the health for two and a half billion people in the world. That, that's, our, that's our vision. That's our target. That's what we want to be. We want to provide, you know, very good return to our shareholders and we want to create a place where people thrive, right? And we want to really create a th- thriving people uh, organization where we all can come and do and, and do our best and, and take it to the next level. Having said that purpose, then, then what's our strategy, right? I mean, basically what we need to do. So so here is here is the key part, which is, I, I think, very, very important for, for everybody to know. We have a good, big general medicine business that comprises of antibiotics and so forth. And, respiratory uh, areas. But then we are investing, if you're following the news, you saw that we just recently acquired um, Sierra Oncology. And there is a lot of work is happening um, in terms of our own strong R&D pipeline. And then vaccine is the key business. We are the largest vaccine provider. So continue to be. So thought process there is that we continue to focus on our immune system based science, human genetics and advanced technology to make sure that we focus on the four therapeutic areas. And that's again key. That we are not focusing everywhere four therapeutic area. One is the infectious disease, right? Uh, that's where the the um, the uh, the vaccine play a big business. HIV is a big business for us. And the oncology, part of the specialty medicines, and then obviously immunology and respiratory are uh, going to be a key part of it. Now, having said that, the strategy part, the other important part for us, which is so exciting is the building that new GSK culture. 
Um, and, the, and, and, and what that is, is actually comprises of three strong pillars. One is that we all are ambitious for our patients, right? Patients are waiting. We need to make sure that we deliver what matters faster and better, right? And then making sure that all of us, every single person in GSK, accountable for impact. There's a clear ownership and then have all the support that's needed to be success, successful and succeed, right? And then more important part, because the kind of the business that we are in, do the right thing, right? It is so important that we have integrity um, and, and that we care because people are counting on us. It is so important for us. So as you can tell, I mean, I, I can go on and on and on, but I, for me, um, it is a, such an exciting time to be in GSK. So from your perspective, from your vantage point, when you're thinking about digital transformation, what does it mean for you uh, as a technology leader? And how do you apply it to the industry, the pharma industry, and anything exciting that you're doing within GSK? So, you know, it's a very, very good question because these are these truly are buzzwords. I think the third trend that is happening is, and again, something which has been there forever. I think automation is nothing that people are not, uh, people are not aware of whatever, right? But how do we really now create that automation as intelligent automation. Um, and again, that intelligent automation means, again, applying the AI ML piece on top of, um, again, the amount of data that is available to us and become more predictive and proactive. And I can bring that in the in the, in the form of, for example, our supply chain. Right? Being the pharma organization, one well, of the key part of our business supply chain, I mean, how do I really, um, you know, right from the manufacturing, well, sourcing, for example, like how can I do that from sourcing and making and then able to distribute warehousing and then and selling it out and and create that cost of goods down and then create that you know the the flawless supply chain using the technology to make sure that more and more patients need the medicine on time at the right cost so what that means is how much i can automate how much can i create uh, and build these sensors based devices where i can or proactively maintain these devices and the machines and plcs so that our supply chain resiliency goes up right how can I really create the factory of the future that is the 4.0 that we're talking about? Again, built on top of automation, built on top of data aspect of it. So that that's I think um, another another uh, you know trait uh, kind of piece. And then and I think the last thing is again a web 3.0. I think we all be all counting on it. And and how do we really kind of bring that together uh, to take it to the next level? And again, as, as we all know, that no matter what I say today, you know tomorrow it can change drastically because the, and which is what is exciting in our in our job that, uh, you know, it, it is constantly evolving and exponentially changing. That's that's a really great thought. And I think you're talking about a little bit about smart ecosystem for intelligent automa uh, automation. What is the exciting that is happening in your area? Automation is not a new thing. Automation existed forever. I mean, the fact that technology came in actually was the automation. Things that were done manually, first of all, that we we understand what need to be automated, right? So we, so we, don't, we don't start automating wrong things and start doing the wrong thing fast. So we need to make sure that that's that. And the clear business objectives are very important. Right? Whether it is done for the cost, it is done for the quality, it is done for both, or it is done for even, you know, take it to the next level for experience perspective, for example. I think most people have the the RPA, right, in the last few years. And I think we are running about 400 bots or so, and we have, I think, target to be probably doubling it in the next uh, couple of years and so forth, right? So that's kind of a big, pretty big growth. Most organizations are all born for self-service aspect of it. So like we just implemented service now mm. in the last couple of years. The thought process there was to automate it in terms of self service, which means that the chatbots and the and the knowledge content and so forth are driving the behavior where I don't need a person to speak with to get something done. And if you look at it, another thing that actually has been um, started in the last few years has been process mining. Because a lot of people realize that when they start process and the process could be go from point A to point B in a straight line. And then few years later, they realize that the straight line is gone. It's become like a zigzag. It's going all over the places to go there. And that's when the process mining comes into place where you actually assess and figure it out, the source and destination, and say, okay, you know what? This is not optimal. How can I how can I make this process a lot more smoother? Absolutely. Great, great th thought there, Raghav. And I just wanted to pick your thoughts on another point that you raised around the, I mean, the meta metaverse. We have digitally semi people. I do. Right, I mean, I, I need something, I like something, I just go and say, yep, that seems like a product I wanted, and then we buy it. Now, some product you say, you know what, I want to try it, right? So let's say a shoe, yeah. or even a TV, or even a TV, uh, you want to see, you know, I want to see how it looks. Now think of it if I can use something where you can just put your Oculus glasses on it, and I give you the same yeah. digital experience, where you try things out exactly how it looks in your house. So here's your house looks like, you bring the TV, digitally put in there, 
And then here it is. There's a digital mall where you can actually do exactly the same experience without ever yeah. leaving your house. What experience is all about. So I think the metaverse, if you think of it, it is still on a hype cycle. Thank you, Agam. Powerful words. I'm sure uh, uh, that's something which will inspire everyone who is working uh, for GSK. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Take care.